There's more to life than Apple in terms of innovative and excellent phones, but choice can be a daunting thing. If you want to look outside of the iPhone as an option, you'll have bigger screens, thinner bodies, and a whole lot more. Well, these two phones are at the high end of the spectrum, and they're both totally different operating systems, each with its own pros and cons. Following up on the best-selling Galaxy S2, this is the Samsung Galaxy S3. It's stylish, slim, and easy to carry. It's got a gorgeous 4.8-inch multi-touch display with ambient light sensor and scratch-resistant glass. Looks aren't everything, though. This stylish device has one of the fastest smartphone processors on the market, and it really shows. Browsing the web is a joy. Well, this beauty is the Nokia Lumia 900. It's made from a single piece of polycarbonate plastic. It's a little boxier, but it's got a 4.3-inch display and plenty of speed and power, and it does everything that I need it to do. The main difference between these two phones is the operating system. The Galaxy S3 is running Android 4.0, known as Ice Cream Sandwich, and is upgradable to Android 4.1, Jelly Bean, while the Lumia 900 runs Windows Phone 7.5, Mango. Getting hungry yet? <laughs> well, if you're hungry for bandwidth, you'll be interested to hear that the Lumia 900 is the very first Windows phone with 4G LTE speeds. This takes advantage of the new 4G high-speed networks that are getting set up across the country. And man, once you use this network, you'll be blown away. It's as fast, if not faster, than many home internet connections that are out there right now. Well, the S3 has LTE as well, and I can't agree more. Coverage is still limited to major centers, but soon enough, we'll all be on LTE. Well, the Lumia weighs in at 5.6 ounces. The screen is big and beautiful with nice saturated colors, and the phone feels good in the hand with a bit of heft. And don't be fooled by the polycarbonate plastic. This thing is really solid. It's got 16 gigs of onboard storage, though it's not expandable. It comes with the usual Windows tie-ins like Bing, Office, and Xbox Live, but it's also got a few Nokia tidbits like Nokia Maps and Nokia Drive. I love the maps in particular, they're excellent and easy to use. It's got an 8 megapixel Carl Zeiss primary camera and a 1.3 megapixel secondary camera on the front for video chat. Pretty standard stuff. The video capture is 720p. It takes great pictures and video with vibrant colors and clearly defined edges. Well, the S3 has an 8 megapixel camera as well, but it also has a back illuminated sensor, which can make a big difference. The front of the Galaxy S3 is dominated by the 4.8 inch 1280 by 720 pixel HD screen. This is one of the best screens on the market right now. Now, Samsung's phones use screens which feature more color saturation than other phones, but I actually like the look of it better this way, and a lot of other people agree. Well, you know, one thing I have to give credit to the S3 for is the expandable storage. Yeah, you can get the S3 with 16, 32, or 64 gigabytes of internal storage. And if you take off the back cover, you'll see a micro SD XE card slot that supports cards up to 64 gigabytes. I like to have my music and movies with me rather than on a cloud sometimes, so this is a big plus for me. The S3 also has two gigs of RAM inside of it. It's kind of crazy to talk about RAM in smartphones by the gig these days. But what about the processor? Oh, the processor. Well, it's a Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 chip running at 1.5 gigahertz. Kind of crazy. It's the fastest one I've seen on a smartphone yet. It can take any app you throw at it, including games on the HD screen. Now, there's some discrepancy here as some of the S3 phones are out there with a dual core chip and some are out there with quad core. You'll have to check with your service provider, but in our test, we've barely seen a difference because the software works so well with the hardware. Well, you know, I found that the uh, Lumia 900 could handle anything that I threw at it as well. And although that the S3 had better specs on paper as far as the screen was concerned, when I have them side by side, I really couldn't tell the difference. Android is further along than Windows Phone at this point in time, though I really do like Windows for getting the basics done. The tiles and cards are pretty easy to a casual smartphone user and really slick. If you're a diehard Xbox user, you'll find its Xbox Live integration really handy, and I found I could get it to do what I needed pretty quickly. The app selection isn't as big as iOS and Android, but with over 100,000 apps available, the basics are pretty much covered. How many apps do you really need anyway? Speaking of Android, what Samsung does, like other phone manufacturers, is add a skin over Ice Cream Sandwich or Jelly Bean with their own software, and they call it TouchWiz. They've upgraded to TouchWiz here with some cool features. My favorite feature is Smart Stay. The little front camera on the S3 watches your eyes as you're looking at the screen, and when you look away, it dims the screen. Now, it's kind of creepy that the S3 is watching you, but you can always turn it off. I personally like it, and it's a great way to save battery, too. 
There's also S-Beam, which lets you transfer files by tapping two S3 phones together and many other features in TouchWiz. Most of them start with the letter S, and I guess that's Samsung's little branding strategy. Some of them are useful, some of them you're probably gonna wanna turn off, but for power users, it's pretty cool to have. Well, it looks like they put the kitchen sink in there too. You know, it's not shy of features and power, that's for sure, but an Android can have a learning curve for the, let's say, less than geeky. I think for those who are just getting a smartphone or want something for more meat and potatoes use and want a nice stylish phone to go with it, the Nokia Lumia 900 is a good bet. Nokia has been making fantastic phones for years and this is no exception. It kind of reminds me of that old candy bar style phone and the way it feels so simple to use. But with all that said, there's more than enough power to do anything that I need it to do. And if you're an Android user, then you can't go wrong with the Galaxy S3. It's the Rolls Royce of smartphones right now. It's gorgeous to look at and a pleasure to use. The improvements in Android 4.0 are stellar and I think Android is ready to go toe to toe with iOS now. Well, I think Windows Phone and this Nokia are going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the others as well, in the sense that they've created a real solid back-to-basic smartphone. <laughs> you think so? Like we should try putting a little boxing gloves on these guys and see my guy beat yours up a few rounds. Well, you know, it's nice to have so many excellent options nowadays, and these are both great phones, although mine is better. Uh, I don't think so. Yes, it is. But I agree to disagree. I just think you're wrong. Gotta get connected.